Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English, and today we are looking at the papers AQA English Literature Paper 1 and AQA English Literature Paper 2. Every year, guys, I get the following question the night before the GCSE exams, and I'm thinking, boy, oh boy, what have you been doing all year that you're asking me this today? Sir, I've got my GCSE exam tomorrow. What books are coming up? Can you please let me know? Don't let that be you guys. In this video, we're going to be going over both of the papers. What books are coming up in which paper? How much time are the exams? Which questions do you answer? Which questions do you not answer? And please guys, please pay extra attention when I go over paper two, because paper two English literature is the one, well, it seems to be the one that a lot of students just don't know what's coming up especially when it comes to the poetry section. So guys, let's begin. Let's go over both of the papers and then let's see how we get on. Everything Education. Tuition for Maths, English and Science. So let's begin by looking at English Literature Paper 1. Now this exam, guys, only has two sections. It has one section about the Shakespeare and one section about the 19th century novel. So every kid who's doing AQA English Literature would have studied the Shakespeare text and the 19th century text. And this is the exam that they come up in. Now the entire exam, guys, is one hour and 45 minutes. That's how the timings for this particular exam works. It's an, entire, it's an exam, guys, that's one hour and 45 minutes. And you literally divide that time in half. And half of the time goes on the Shakespeare and the other half, guys, goes on the 19th century text. Now, those of you sitting, they might be wondering, sir, I know I'm doing some books, but I don't know which one goes where. Well, guys, here are the lists. So, for Shakespeare, guys, you've got Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet, Tempest, Merchant of Venice, Much Ado, and Julius Caesar. The two most popular texts, guys, throughout the entire country are Macbeth and Romeo and Juliet. Now, this is very important, guys. Very, very, very important. I beg you, do not answer every single question please only answer the one that you studied at school you might think sir it's a very stupid thing to say guys trust me it happens every year every year there's a kid in the gcse exams who just blitzes through and answers random questions you only answer one of these the one that your school has taught you macbeth and romeo and juliet being the most popular then you have one out of these Jekyll and Hyde, Christmas Carol, Great Expectation, Jane Eyre, Frankenstein, Pride and Prejudice, and Sign of Four. Again, guys, the two most popular texts being Jekyll and Hyde and A Christmas Carol. You answer one from this section and one from this section. And you find your page. So if you're Macbeth, you're question one, page four to five. If you're, if you're, if you're Christmas Carol, you're question eight on page 14. So let's find the Macbeth one. Where's Macbeth? Guys, there's Macbeth right there. So how the exam works, guys, for the Shakespeare section is you are given an extract from the play. It could be any extract from the entire play. And the question, guys, always says, starting with this moment in the play. That's very important, guys, because the question asks you to, asks you to talk about the extract and talk about the whole play. My advice is always you do two paragraphs about the extract and you do two paragraphs about the entire play. So for this Macbeth, think about it guys, you spent two years doing Macbeth, year 10 and year 11. All that time learning Macbeth and your entire GCSE question is literally asking you to write one essay of four paragraphs about Macbeth. That's it. Two of the paragraphs you will find in the extract, so you take the quotes from the extract, and two of the paragraphs will come from the play as a whole. So please make sure you've learned your quotes. Now, this question, guys, is out of 34 marks. 30 marks marks you on your AO1, AO2, and AO3. So that's your language, structure, form, context. And the other four marks is for your spelling, your punctuation, it's essentially your spag. And that is what this question assesses you on. One essay, four paragraphs, done, move on. Then imagine you're doing the 19th century. So you've done your Shakespeare, whatever Shakespeare it was. If it's Romeo and Juliet, if it's Macbeth, whatever. You then go all the way across the paper, guys, and you find the 19th century extracts. Here we go with Jekyll and Hyde, and here we are with Christmas Carol. 
Again, guys, you are given an extract. Again, you are given an extract. And it's the same exact drill. You read the question, you read the extract, and it will always say starting with the extract, extract and the novel as a whole. Again, guys, we're doing four paragraphs, two paragraphs about the extract, two paragraphs about the whole text. One thing you'll notice, guys, this one is out of 30, not 34. All that means is that you are not marked for spam when it comes to this question. But still keep focus, guys. It's still worth 30 marks. So, guys, once you've done your four paragraphs, two for each, then that is your exam done. That is all you are doing in English Literature Paper 1. Two essays. One for the Shakespeare and one for the 19th century text. Then, guys, we move on to paper number two. And paper number two is the sticky one, guys. Paper number two is a two hours and 15 minute exam. It's a long exam. It's the longest exam in any English. And this is the paper that gets the lowest marks every single year. This paper, guys, what does it assess you on? Shakespeare is done. 19th century is done. It leaves us first with the modern text. Now, your modern text, guys, can be any one of these. The most popular being an inspector calls across the entire country. But it can be any one of these. Again, you find the one that your school is doing. And then you find your question. Now, one very, very straight away important difference. There is no extract. There is no crutch to lean on. You have to know this text inside out because you have no quotes on the page. So if you don't know this text, and if you don't know any quotes at all, you basically can't do anything. So for this one, it's very, very important to learn your quotes. So once you turn to the question, guys, you're going to see that there are two questions and you only do one. It says either or. Don't do both of them. You pick one and they're all multiple choice in the section. They're all multiple choice. You pick the one that you want to do. Normally, guys, the questions are either about a character or about a theme and you pick the one that you would like to do. It's the same dream. You do four paragraphs, having language, structure, form, and context throughout. And once you've done your four paragraphs, guys, you move on, spending 45 minutes on this section. I should have made a point that earlier, guys, but yes, for this section, guys, you are spending 45 minutes. That's the first part of paper two complete. Then we go all the way down the paper, guys. We go all the way. You skip all these pages because these pages are not for you if you're doing an inspector course. And then you land on the poetry. Guys, then you land on the poetry. Now, for the scene poetry, for the scene poetry, guys, you will either be doing love, power, or the world poems. Now, you pick your section, whichever one you've been taught. But make sure you pick the one that you've been taught. Don't just turn to the first poem and think that's the one that you're supposed to answer. So if you're doing love and relationships, you look for love and relationships. So this is the poem from the love and relationship section. 30 marks. And if you're doing power and conflict, then you look for the power and conflict. And this is the poem for the power and conflict section. The new section isn't on this paper because this is an old paper, but you would do the same thing. But guys, that's the first un sorry, that's the first poetry question. You are answering one question from the whatever poems you've been covering at school. Now, in your exam, you are given one of the poems. In your exam, guys, you are given one of the poems. And your job is to compare the poem they give you with one other poem that you've done or you've revised. 30 marks, guys. 30 marks. My advice is three paragraphs and you're spending, again, 45 minutes in on this question. 45 minutes, three paragraphs, and we're comparing two poems in every single paragraph. Now, just some important points. The poem they give you, don't just write three paragraphs only about this poem. You're going to have to compare. Now, to compare, you're going to have to have learnt some poems off by heart. When I say off by heart, I don't mean the entire poem, but just some key quotes, um, just so you're ready for your exam. My advice is always learn nine out of the 15 off by heart. 
Now, that's that first question on poetry done. So let's recap paper two so far. We've spent 45 minutes doing the modern text, the inspector calls and so on. Then you spend 45 minutes doing your poetry question, which is either, which is one of the, sorry, which is from the section that you've been doing at school, the power and conflicts and the love and relationships and so on. Once that is done and you've done your section, you then go to the unseen poetry section. Now, it doesn't matter what school you go to, doesn't matter what set you're in, doesn't matter who your teacher is. Every student doing AQA will be doing the exact same unseen poetry question in the entire country. Your unseen poetry question, guys, your first unseen poetry question, let me make a note of it, guys, it is a 24 mark question. And for a 24 mark question, you are spending 30 minutes doing three paragraphs. Why are we doing three paragraphs? Because we're not comparing. So it's 10 minutes per paragraph, doing three pretzel paragraphs. And they're going to give you a poem. They're going to give you a poem. And they're going to give you a question based upon the poem. My advice is to always read the question first, because the question basically tells you what the poem is about. In this one, guys, in I'm offering this poem, how does the poet present the speaker's feelings about love? So we know this poem is about love. And you must write three paragraphs about how this poet presents love and their feelings in this particular poem. That's the first unseen poetry question done. So, modern text, 45 minutes. The seen poetry, 45 minutes. The first unseen poetry question, 30 minutes. If you're adding up the time, that is two hours of your exam done. You then have one more question. Don't forget this, guys. And this is when you're tired. Guys, this is when you're tired and your hands are hurting. But you have one more question. And this is the last unseen poetry question. This unseen poetry question, guys, is worth eight marks. And you're looking to spend 10 to 15 minutes. And one paragraph, one good paragraph, is sufficient here to get you seven to eight out of eight. What will happen here, guys, is... AQA will give you another unseen poem. So here, guys, they gave the poem, The Sun Has Birthed the Sky. And they said, can you write down what are the similarities or the differences that the poets use to present their feelings about love? So then you have another unseen poem, which, which will normally be here, and you compare one paragraph, guys, just one paragraph. How is love presented in this one to how love is in this one? One paragraph and you're done. That is your entire paper two exam. Now guys, look, paper two can be a sticky exam because paper two has a lot of moving parts. Look at the entire paper two, guys. You've got your modern prose and drama, you've got your anthology poems, and you've got your unseen poetry. There's a lot happening in this exam. So if you're not careful, you're gonna miss parts. Paper one is easy. Paper one is two essays, Shakespeare, and the 19th century. One, one, done. Paper two, though, is four questions. Modern text, seen poetry, unseen poetry, and unseen poetry comparison. So please, guys, make sure you know what's coming up where and you start practicing accordingly. All right, guys, I hope you found this video beneficial. It's been Mr. Everything English.